Good morning, Mr. Minnick here, illustrating how to trace and uh, solve tricky string multiple choice worksheet questions that could appear on the AP exam. So we have this uh, string called line, and it's got a, a bunch of words and spaces in there. And then uh, we have to interpret x equals line.index of. Well, if you look up in the API or my lecture notes, or if you just play with this in an online compiler or Eclipse, you'll see that index of finds the first occurrence of whatever string it's looking for, in this case the single letter M, in the variable that comes before the dot in line.index of. So we're looking for the first M up here in, in the variable line. And right there is the first M. And it's in position 2. Position 2 there, if you count, starting with 0 and then 1, 2. That E would be in position 3. And just for the record, uh, that space is considered to be in position 4 and so on. Spaces count as characters. So the variable x, if you're tracing this like you should on an AP exam question, the variable x, which is an integer, is storing the value 2. Because that's where the first occurrence of m found. Don't ask me how to find the second occurrence of m. You can't do it directly with index of. You'd have to use a loop or something like that. Anyway, the next line of code. We have this variable str, which is a string. And str is, oh, this is tricky. str is really the concatenated combination of something over here glued together with something over here. So let's look at the something over here. The way substring works is you start at whatever the first parameter is. Well, I think uh, the S here is position 10, if you were to count those letters starting at 0. And 15 takes you to this space right here. And the way substring works, according to the API and my lecture notes, is you extract the string that starts with 10 and goes up to but not including the position 15. So 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. The word silly is now being parsed and, and extracted out of the larger sentence here. So this left-hand side is the word silly in its own like little mini set of double quotes. And we have to decide now what is the right-hand side of this uh, concatenation expression. Well, let's go find the 25th position. The 20, in position 25, I believe is this S right here. You can double check on your own time. And this convenient expression, 25 plus X, well, because X is 2, that simplifies to 27. So in other words, you're taking the, the part ST. ST is what was extracted there on the side of the plus, not STR. Because we're not going up to and including position 27, which is the R. The R there is in position 27. We're not including the R for the same reason that we did not include this blank space over here when we did the 10, 15. So the answer is clearly A. So uh, that was a tricky question because a lot of people usually have the, the answer B as a wrong answer because they include this R, and that's just plain wrong or they think that the space was trapped as part of uh, the left-hand side here with silly, so they have the answer uh, D. D's a, a, a likely wrong answer also. Anyway, moving on to number two here. Well, they, they sometimes give you an example, and they did hear that some guy named Anthony Coppola. So let's pretend that uh, full name, let's pretend that full name is the variable full name is Anthony Coppola, this right here. Let's pretend that that's stored there. Okay, well, what is K? K is the occurrence, the position of the occurrence of the first blank space. And the first blank space here, I'll just count out loud. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That space is in position 7. So that, therefore, that's what's being stored in K. I'll make a little column for K. I like to trace code very carefully and accurately here. And now we have to decide what is last name. Well, which of these three Roman numeral 
code segments could plug in for expression here and make this work? Well, the answer, well, let's uh, proceed forward. If k were simply put in substring there, that means in the case of Anthony Coppola, we are pulling out the substring that starts at position 7. Well, position 7 is the blank space, so that would pull out space Coppola, because when you have substring with just one parameter, it starts at that point and it extracts everything from there on in the string. So if we start at 7, the space, and take everything with it, the answer here would come out to space Coppola, which is not his last name. That's his last name with the space added to it, which is plain wrong. So Roman numeral 1 is out, and that rules out A and E. So now we have to decide if 2 and 3 work. Well, it turns out 2 and 3 are the same, because the second parameter ends up being optional, in my opinion. Here's why. Full name dot length. Well, in the case of Anthony Coppola, the letters uh, that you count up here, let's see. When you do a length, you don't start counting at zero. When you find the length of a string, you count the characters, plain and simple. So let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You can double check me, but counting that space and starting at 1, we have a length of 15. And when substring executes here, because k is 7 and 7 plus 1 is 8, we are starting with the C in, in his name. The C is in position 8. Now the question is, when you have substring in this example of 8 comma 15, is that an error? Because 15 is the, is the position after the letter A. A, if you count correctly, is position 14. Starting at 0, that A is in position 14. Is it an error when you have substring something comma a number that is one past the position of the last letter. No, it's not an error. In fact, an error isn't an option on this uh, AP multiple choice question. So, um, if you do look it up in the API or in my lecture notes, you will see that that is perfectly legal in this situation, and Roman numeral 3 simply takes the everything starting at position 8, up through but not including position 15, which would be Coppola, and substring just 8 in parentheses, like Roman numeral 2, also gets interpreted to be Coppola. Because substring can work in those two different ways. It's called an example of an overloaded method, which we'll study later in this course, but an overloaded method is simply a method that can work in two different ways, with two different sets of parameters. The final answer here is D. Number three, they, uh, they give us two sample cases, so let's just use this uh, dog sample case, and let's pretend that S is dog. And therefore, the D is in position zero, and the uh, G is in position two, and that's the way it is. Well, uh, I need to figure out which, express, which uh, assignment statement here correctly turns dog into og day, pig Latin. Well, we need to parse off the og. So which of these first uh, left sides get og? You know, we have a plus in all of these. So we've got the og, we need the og over here. Sorry about that. We need the og on the left-hand side and we need the uh, day to be on the right-hand side. Well, og is found by starting at position 1 and taking everything in dog to the end. Well, let's uh, just th jump in here with a. 0. If that 0 is there, that means you're starting with a d. So that's plain out wrong. a and c can both be eliminated just on that little bit of double checking, tracing. We need aug on the left hand side of the plus and, and that zero doesn't get it. Okay, let's look further at uh, b. s dot length. 
Well, the length of dog is 3. So if you have 1 comma 3 with substring, that means you're starting at 1, the O, you're going up to but not including whatever's in position 3. Well, there is no position 3. So that, is that an error? No. Based on what we just looked at in the previous exercise, where we had a 15 I seem to remember, it was not an error. So this would not be an error either. This part right here does work in answer B. That mini part of it does extract aug. Now notice down here you have a minus 1. Length minus 1 for a dog would be 2. That means you're taking all the letters from 1 up to but not including 2. Starting at 1, up 2, but not including 2. No, that just gets the letter O. This right here would just extract the digit, the letter O, which uh, is the beginning of Aug Day, but I have a feeling the G is not, uh, does not work on the right-hand side of this, uh, of, of, of answer uh, D. We'll get back to it, but uh, we'll see. Okay, uh, E, the left-hand side, 1 comma S length. Well, that does correctly get aug. We don't lose the G like we did up in the answer to, uh, to D. Okay, the right-hand side, hey, I like E. E's starting to smell right. Let's see if the right-hand side of E works. Well, S dot substring 0 comma 1. Start at 0, go up to but not including 1. Start at 0, the D, go up to but not including the O. Okay, that gets a D correctly, and that's being concatenated with A string. And A string is A, ha! Put the pieces together here with concatenation, and the answer D, or the answer E, I'm sorry, is O G D A Y. O G D A Y. That's exactly what we wanted. And since I happen to get lucky and find it in my answer E after ruling out A and C and partially ruling out D, I got lucky and uh, saved some time on the AP exam. The answer to this question is E. I leave it to you as a, a something to do in your own time to figure out why the right-hand side of D is wrong, perhaps, or, uh, or B is uh, wrong. And I'm moving on to the next problem. Okay, this is the hardest problem on this worksheet, especially for uh, this early in the school year for my students at least. I haven't really uh, uh, stressed methods, but just like in uh, Visual Basic, the prerequisite course, uh, this is a, a function or a method that returns a string. And it takes two parameters, S1 and S2. Unfortunately, they didn't give us an example like dog up here or the word crisp. So we have to make an example if you want to uh, uh, do this problem in the way that I like to do them. So I'm going to pretend that S1 is a bigger string and S2 is something that you might find inside of S1. So uh, let's say that S1 is um, the word Robert. Low, lower case just to be simple about it. And let's say that S2 is well like the the letters BE or just the single letter B, but let's go with a, a hardier uh, substring that uh, will help us with this uh, problem. Okay, so with this as our uh, inputted parameters, let's uh, identify what index, the variable index is. Well, it's an int, and it's equal to whatever s1.index of s2 is, which means we're looking for B inside of Robert. Where is B found in Robert? What's the starting point of the B in Robert? Well, 0, 1, 2. That's where B starts. Hey, by the way, if B wasn't found anywhere in Robert, then negative 1 would be stored in the index if you read the API or the lecture notes. But anyway, we did find B in Robert. It was found in position 2. So there's a 2 stored there. Now, this return statement. Let's work from inside the parentheses out and figure out what this method is returning as a string. Well, index we know is 2, so we have a 2 comma. Uh, ooh, maybe we can rule some answers out already. Well, that's a thought, but let's just proceed forward. So index plus S2 length. Well, S2 is the word B, and the length of that is obviously 2. So this uh, right here is a 2, and this index is coincidentally a 2. So we have a 2 plus a 2 mathematically being added up to make a 4. 
in this example that I've rigged up. So what we really have with substring is 2, comma, 4 in these parentheses. And that's easy. What is, look at S1, keep your eye focused on what you're uh, substringing. Let's go to Robert and find the substring of 2, comma, 4. Well, we start at the 2, and we go up to, but not including, the 4 position. So we don't include the R. We're extracting the BE in this, in this situation. And the, the letters BE as a string are what's being returned by this method to whatever method called it, which we don't really care about. So in this particular example, where S1 and S2 were Robert and B, it returned B. That's exactly what Roman numeral 1 is suggesting, that it may return a string that is equal to S2. Now, could it return a string that has no characters in common with S2? Uh, I don't think so. No matter what you use as test cases here, you're always pulling something out of S1. So there's always going to be, it's always, well, anyway, uh, I think it always works that it has, that, that it never works that it has no characters in common. That just kind of goes against what, exactly what's happening. Now, could it ever return, they use the word may, could this algorithm possibly return a string that is equal to S1? This is a situation where critical thinking and life experiences have taught me that we could have started with S2 as Robert, as well as S1 being starting as Robert. I just know from having done enough practice AP workbook questions to play devil's advocate and plug in various test cases, when they use the word may here, I'd like to play with it. And if just, you double check the code, but if you plug Robert in for both parameters, it will return the word Robert, which is S1. So Roman numeral 3 is rare, but potentially possible if, if, uh, if both parameters here were the same string. It would not cause an error. It would always return the word Robert from the word Robert. Because the word Robert is found in position 0 of Robert. And that, that would cause the word Robert to be returned. I think you'll find that you'll never find a test case that makes Roman numeral 2 work. How much time you devote to a question like this on the AP exam is up to you. You only learn from taking practice tests or just living a long life. Like, you know, adults have seen stuff like this, but beginner programmers uh, sometimes have to, like, think harder uh, than veteran programmers that have seen this kind of a trick often. So another test case that I sometimes like to throw in is the empty string. What if S2, instead of being Robert there, or the word B, was empty string? Well, I think index of would return a negative 1 if it doesn't find uh, something in there. And if negative 1 is plugged in here for index, ooh, this might cause an error. But because we're just asking if it may return certain situations, the fact that error is a possibility uh, isn't really covered in any of these wrong, uh, any of these answers. So a null string will not uh, avoid uh, the truthness to the answer here being A.